topic for today is daycare. And I know some of you are probably like, yeah, let's talk about this. What do you have to say? Why, why is this an important, pivotal, critical cultural topic? And some of you are like, oh, you know what? My kids are grown up. I don't care about this. Well, let me just stop you right there. This is a very, very important topic for everyone. Whether you have children in daycare, whether you are a stay-at-home parent, whether you are a grandparent, whether you are young and don't have children yet, this is actually, we talk often about the culture war, right? How the left is trying to subvert our civil institutions or our cultural institutions, trying to disrupt the family unit. And they're being very effective doing this, right? We can see that in schools. We can see that in uh, the medical field. I mean, obviously, we can see that in public libraries. We see that in in children's books. We see this in the, the drag queen story hours. We see this in the drag shows for children. We see this in TikTok. All these different cultural aspects are being captured by the left and weaponized against us, weaponized against our children, weaponized against our family, weaponized against our country. This is, believe it or not, also a way that the left is trying to capture our children. Now, there's gonna be some people listening to the show who are gonna think, well, listen, I went to daycare myself or I have children in daycare and I don't know that this this is my experience. And I would say to you, hear me out. Hear what I have to say because I I, I sit here in no, uh, if you send your child to daycare, right? I'm not sitting here thinking of you contemptuously. I'm not thinking of you um, in a judgmental way. I know that when we talk about daycare, it actually, people don't talk about daycare because anything that has to do with parenting, especially that has to do with mothering, there's so much emotion that goes into it because we all care about our kids, right? We all care so much about our kids. We make decisions because we think those decisions are the best for our families, and which means that we think that the decisions that other people make, if they're different, aren't the best decisions because otherwise we would make those decisions too. It's not necessarily judgment. It's just that we are making the best decision for our family But I'm not sitting here judging you, and I don't think that my audience is going to be triggered the way that some people are triggered by this conversation because I think very highly of you. I think that you are here listening to the show because you want to hear hard truths, because you want to be challenged by new information, because we are reorienting as a conservative movement, we're reorienting our entire world view on how we operate from our home lives to our political lives to our social lives. And I think that this is food for thought. Whatever you decide to do with this information, I think that you will really want to hear this. So this all started with some controversy, with some drama. It happened about a week ago at a conservative conference. Um, Alex Clark, host of the podcast Spillover, she works for Turning Point USA, gave a speech at a conference and she talked about feminism. She talked about, it was, it was a conference for young women and she talked about lies that young women have been told. And one of those lies, she said, was, Uh, about daycare. She said women have been told that they can find fulfillment by going to work, that their value is really found in the the monetary value of their paycheck. And stay-at-home moms have always been, by the left at least, and by our culture at large, have have been sneered at. Every stay-at-home mom knows this. Everybody, every woman knows this. Whether you're a stay-at-home mom or not, knows that stay-at-home moms get a little bit of the the degrading treatment from, from working moms. That's simply, I'm not trying to start any more drama, that's simply the fact of the matter. Um, And this is essentially what Alex Clark said about daycare. So take a look at this first. When daycare was invented in the United States in the 30s, the goal was to be a last resort for the single moms, widows, and low-income families with no multi-generational help. But just like everything else, over time, it was twisted and accepted by society as the new normal. And let me tell you something, just because something is normal or common doesn't mean that it's right. Okay, so after this speech, Media Matters writes a hit piece on Alex Clark and on this message and singles out the fact that Alex Clark talked about daycare and talked about how daycare came into being and how women should should discern whether to send their children to daycare and what information women should use to discern whether to send their children to daycare. And Media Matters, as Media Matters always does, wrote some pretty hideous stuff. The, The author of this piece at Media Matters says, I'm fascinated by Turning Point USA's Young Women's Leadership Summit for the same reasons I watch ABC's The Bachelorette. The dating show awkward or tries to awkwardly reconcile fundamentally opposed interpretations of gender roles in a woman's pursuit of an opposite sex partner. The woman crowned as a bachelorette each season represents a certain type of conformity. She's feminine, unattainable, a prize to be won, flirty, and non-threatening to masculinity, the ideal future wife. 
At the same time, her role is highly subversive to the traditional norms of courtship. She's dating 25 men at once. The scenario totally boggles the normative masculinity of the contestants pursuing her. This Young Women's Leadership Summit, which targets college and high school age girls, grapples with these same contradictions in a much darker and more prescriptive way. Speaker after speaker emphasized to the audience that they should become wives, mothers, and accessories to the astroturfed conservative movement rather than pursuing a demanding career. These themes are blah, blah, blah. Alex Clark, Media Matters writes, host of Turning Point USA's podcast directed at young women, and the face of this event opened the conference with what can only be described as an angry, judgmental lecture titled The Top Four Lies of Modern Feminism. She opened by asking, Young Women's Leadership Summit, are you ready to see this degenerate, rotten culture that we've been living in get a makeover? I love that line, by the way. After applause, she praised the audience themed outfits. For the next 30 minutes, she launched into a winding pseudo-academic diatribe about the four lies of modern feminism, which, according to Clark, are birth control, abortion, fertility care, and daycare. And then she said... Uh, They called her speech sleepy and bizarre. And then she said, not only is Clark a highly successful political commentator with two podcasts in the face of a yearly conference, she is also, as she noted in her own speech, not a mother. Even more bizarrely, she was not giving opening remarks to a conference of mothers. So let's address that first, right? She doesn't have children. Alex Clark doesn't have children. My answer to that is, so what? So what, she's not allowed to have an opinion about daycare. She's not allowed to have researched this topic for herself. This is the most inane argument against what she has to say. In fact, I would categorize what she's doing. If I'm analyzing what she's doing, she's preparing because she wants to be a wife and she wants to be a mother. She wants to know how to raise her children. Preparation is prudent, especially in a culture that as soon as you become pregnant, as soon as you give birth to a child, inundates you with all this fear intended to usher you into the decisions that they want you to make about your kid. Preparing is exactly what young women should do. So that's a really stupid argument. But I would like to address this topic because of the cultural impact that um, the left's narrative on raising our children to be the next generation of Americans and how daycare plays into this. And I say I, I, I say this as a working mom, right? I'm obviously sitting here talking to you at, at, at my desk, in my office, in my studio. I uh, do not have my, I have a two and a half year old daughter. I do not have my two and a half year old daughter on my hip at this moment, which means that I am not the one taking care of her at this moment. Someone else is. And I would like to say just to preempt criticism that no, I don't send my day, my daughter to daycare. In fact, I'm very fortunate to be in a situation where when I am working, my husband, who is a medical provider, is not working. He has he works the longer shifts, fewer days of the week, meaning you know twelve hour days, a couple days a week. So we we flip flop work days, right? So we're very fortunate to be able to not we don't even have childcare. We we do our childcare ourselves. We raise our daughter, my husband and I, and that's the reason that I'm working. Hi guys, it's Liz Wheeler. Don't forget to watch my show, The Liz Wheeler Show, every night at 7 p.m. on The First TV. You can download the free First TV app or you can visit thefirsttv.com slash Liz and start watching today.